Hey guys. Hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been what nine months, something like that, since we really made the video together. Uh, it was August of twenty three. Uh, so we're June second, twenty twenty four, right now. Um, so we've made a little bit of progress, not as much as we wanted to on the house. Uh, just uh, a lot of things, but we have done some really cool stuff. Um, yeah, we redirected a little of our energy into some other things, but. Yeah. Let us give you an update of what we do have. So right now we're starting off in the garden, uh, so Shelly can take over from there, because <laughs> I know nothing about plants. That's not true. Right behind us, actually, featuring a very lovely water catchment that uh, has really already been helpful for the garden. So I'll go back there and let him describe what happened. So Shelly decided that uh, basically, uh, you know, it was harder to get water up here to garden and to keep the garden up. And so we figured that there, our lack of green thumbs was more a lack of water. So went ahead and took one of the 55 gallon drums that we had, cut off the top there, which is already cut off, and then just filtered a little piece of tarp here and put a hose bip at the end and made this little stand off of wood and logs that we had. So now he, now all she has to do is fill up her jug here from the rainwater. Boom. She can go water her garden. So we have potatoes that are trying right here, but it's been quite wet. Um, so I'm thinking they're actually a little too wet. Handy little rope. Be like, ka -chow. Um, Over here, I did try again with the tomatoes. The tomatoes I planted did not do anything. However, there were lots of volunteers in every other garden bed. So I just transplanted a bunch of the volunteers from the other garden bed into here. So we got a whole bunch of tomatoes. They're more than likely going to be the cherry tomatoes since that's the one we prolifically eat uh, quite a lot of. So there's this garden bed with the tomatoes. Our strawberry bed over here is doing really quite nicely. It's actually shot out quite a bit more this year. We got other shoots. And I transplanted mint over here since the mint and strawberries do well. Uh, you might see at the far side there's a little tomato that's volunteered itself there that I decided to keep that one there in case that's the only tomato that decides to produce. Actually you'll see a couple in a few other beds. Um, this bed didn't do so well either with the bell peppers but again I found transplants from the other garden beds. And I put a bunch of the bell peppers in here. Um, these are, I don't know yet. But I left a couple of them so we could maybe figure out what they are. Uh, over here, it's actually one of the really good ones. Last year we did pretty good with the green beans here. And so that's what this giant vine is, is the green beans. And it seems to be doing quite well and happy. Along with even more tomato volunteers again leaving them to try to eh, let something survive <laughs> if it's growing it's growing uh, we did try with a couple watermelons right here but not not looking so well um, this is another bed that's actually doing really well this year um, this is mostly cucumbers and you'll see some nasturtium in there as well. Uh, again, still some more tomatoes. This is where I gathered actually most of those transplants from was up in here, but I definitely think these cucumbers are gonna be quite happy. And hopefully we'll get some good ones this year. So that would be the update on the garden, actually getting better and better this year. And I, I do think having water really did help this year with us a couple of the dry days i was able to get out here early in the morning water things um, but it's been rainy on and off still this spring so most things are getting wet at least at night or still moist in the morning from humidity and whatnot um, i would say that uh, most of this morning it was rainy and then it kind of cleared up in the afternoon so that you know that's been kind of typical lately The biggest projects we've been working on have been right around the house. Um, so we'll take you over there. Did a lot of concrete work, uh, a lot of concrete work. 
Um, we calculated up, what was it, 34, 36 bags? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, sometimes I ran over, but it was good because we were able to use that excess uh, concrete to uh, take care of some other projects around the house. So let me show you this. So right here where we're pulling in and out the motorcycle, it makes it a lot less sloppy and muddy. So this is just, I threw it down, sprayed some water on it, you know, but it works. Just to make an easier drive for the motorcycle, which is in our big giant tanks of almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then this section of the driveway, that's because it's at a low point, kind of got a lot of wash out. So again, just took some extra bags that we had left, threw it down, wetted it, and it's been holding up a lot better for the erosion. And especially since that tree's right there, we don't want that tree to get weakened and blow over. It's a very big tree. It's a really pretty tree. I'm sure at some point we'll have to decide whether or not to keep it or lose it, but at this point we're keeping it and um, so we're just trying to keep it from dying out, really. But all that concrete came from... Ta-da! Our front steps. So we already have the forms up. We've been walking on this really big gravel, like everything's here. Um, so I'll put the little bit of uh, photo progression of how we built these. Uh, but we got it all done out nice right there. So it's a much easier gradual step into the house. Um, it's super... It's super lovely just being able to have a porch to finally sit out on. It's easier to sweep off. Uh, not tracking as much, I think, in the house either. Yeah, and not only that, but we talked about, you know, last Thanksgiving that, you know, my mom and my stepdad and the niece and nephew were coming out. And I noticed my mom had a lot of issues uh, mobility-wise getting in and out of the house because it was kind of janky. And so... And the rocks are just hard. We've even tripped and fallen. Yeah, so I didn't want that happening, rock. and especially as we age and everything like that. So this helped us. And then we had a, I had a dream after we decided what our next project was about how I was going to get that in the house. And I was like, I can't do that without proper steps. It's just going to be a nightmare. So, nightmare. so we decided to make this the first project, which led to this one. Let's go inside the house. Which is our full refrigerator. Ooh. Ah, baby. Freezer. Can I get that? Double drawer, even. And this big old fridge. We're adults. We have a refrigerator. <laughs> like, I can sit inside this refrigerator and almost close the door. <laughs> like, it's huge. It's amazing. And it doesn't even suck any more power from what I could tell. Than the little than dorm that fridge thing. that we had. So this was a win. And it's definitely increased the quality of life, you know, for food storage and everything like that. And we can buy more groceries. Don't judge us by how empty it is right now, okay? <laughs> We're still getting used to it. <laughs> We're still getting used to the amount of groceries that we could actually fit in there. And plus get through before things go bad. Uh, um, we did get this extra cabinet here. Um, that actually stores a lot of our excess stuff that the under pantry was doing for us. Um, and then we put up these cabinets in the kitchen over here above the stove. Shelly can't reach the top one. So all the excess stuff, I have to reach these so that she can get to. But it is actually starting to look like an actual kitchen, and so it's kind of been fun getting used to used to that, mm -hmm. um, having more storage. Um, and so we're just going to cut it. We did redirect into the kitchen rather than the bump outs or some of the other projects we were talking about. Um, just the quality of living and, and being able to have food, fresh food more became kind of a health necessity for the both of us in, in just making sure that we could eat good clean food all right 
and we did end up changing over to that 48 volt system as you saw in the previous video that was separate from our update video um but we took it to a step further because we noticed that after we did that see we haven't finished the ceiling yet uh, but we got a lot of that up uh but uh we noticed that the the deep cycle marine batteries were just petering out on us and they Not weren't holding up. it with the 48 volt charge so we converted over got very fancy so this is a 48 volt lithium battery uh, it'll display you have these right here which is pretty much full and then you can also hit that and you can see its status so right now it's at what 86 percent it's still charging it's got a full fridge running all the lights are on um then that would be the inverter uh, that totally helps explain what's going on in the system currently then it also helps switch between the generator and the solar depending on what we have going on what's needed and we could have it automatically set too so it's just pretty awesome now, one of the main things when we got this battery was it took us, what, three, four weeks to dial in all the settings because there are over 60 settings in that hybrid solar inverter. Um, it is rated to be split phase to where you can run 110 or 220. You need a second one to do the 220. Uh, but, you know, there's so many settings on there for how you want it to charge, where you want it to kick off, where you want it to kick on, all these things that it really took us a, a little bit to really get it dialed in. Now that we get it dialed in, I can't remember the last time I pushed that button on the inverter. No. Um, usually, or even on the battery. Yeah, usually uh, I might check it once a week or if three days of consistent overcast bad weather, that's when we're like, okay, maybe we should run the generator today, get us a full charge, and then be on with our lives. But we've really cut back on how much we've been running the generator, uh, except for filling the water catchment tank. Um, and we've been looking into maybe expanding the system to run the 220 so that it could run the well pump for us because um, it is possible and that's why Connor had done all the research to switch us over to the 48 volt system was so that we can expand on that and have that fuel the entire house for us. Mm -hmm. Um, and so far it's been doing great. Um, we haven't even needed to get more solar panels yet. I know in our future we will. Um, but right now, yeah, we could go about three days of no sunshine and still have things running. It's by day like three and a half, four, that we're like, all right, let's turn on the generator, fuel up the system, and, and then we'll be set to go for another three, four days. So. And you'll see our ceiling fan going on in the background there. Uh, we got that up. Let me turn off the light so you're not blinded by that in the video. But yeah, it's pretty cool. And so that's really helped in here during the summer. Uh, we haven't even had the AC out yet because yeah. even on the 85 degree days, we turn this sucker on high and it feels 10 degrees cooler. Just with the air movement. Mm -hmm. um, so that added with the windows open has really increased the circulation of air in the house and has really kept it quite livable and comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. Like, been fun. <laughs> so we did get a little bit of stuff done outside though. So we'll take you out there so that you can see that. Uh, in the last video you saw it set the post uh, for the bump outs. Uh, so now I've got the collars on where Shelly had put those screws and we poured that concrete as well. And flip this. So these are set now. Uh, still need to stain them, clean them up. But this is where those floor joists are going to end up sitting on. For when we bring everything out. And so now you can really see that difference of, you know, the grade and the drop. And we're going to do this and then a step down to this one, as we previously mentioned. So it's not too big of a step, but it's still going to have to be multi-level. Uh, these ones, we haven't gotten the sleeves on because they're going to be really tall. So I think we're just going to clean these up, stain them, and, you know, they're already concreted into the ground, so they should be good. Uh, one of the cool benefits of going to the 48 volt system 
is that we got to get rid of all those batteries that were hanging out here. Uh, but we didn't just trash them or anything like that. They found a great new home. Our neighbor down the street, uh, Kara Lee, uh, had wanted to do off-grid uh, for her water. She does water rainwater catchment, and so she wanted to supply the rainwater uh, catchment to the house. So we went down there. We ended up plumbing in the house. Uh, she had already done the drain stuff, so we did all the supply stuff and got it uh, on our old solar panel systems that we had originally got from Harbor Freight. Uh, she's using those to power her water system now. So everything found its new home and is still being used. Yeah. And um, then the only uh, thing... There were a few of those batteries, like we were saying, that were dying out and weren't doing good. So we ended up, you know, cycling those and actually helped contribute the funds to getting this, the, that fancy lithium one. Yep. Um, it wasn't too much, but it was still enough that it was worth it to make sure to recycle the ones that were bad safely, get the core charge back, and then put the funds towards upgrading our right. system. So we're not currently using the wind turbine that we had got last time because that's a 12-volt wind turbine. And to convert that three-phase over to the DC, it's, it's a pain in the butt. But the good thing is uh, that... It will be used later on down the road mm -hmm. when we actually build out, you know, the storage uh, right there because we're going to run that off of a 12 volt system. Yeah. So right now it's a really fancy de decor. <laughs> uh, the generator uh, has been working really well. Uh, we've had a few minor uh, maintenance issues that we've had to do on it. Um, there it is right there. Uh, mostly uh, replacing gaskets around the carburetor. Um, this last time, uh, the tolerance wasn't, you know, just from five years of use. The tolerance on the valves needed to be adjusted. And I'd never done that, and I'm not a mechanic, but uh, watched some YouTube videos, figured out tools I needed, the feeler gauges and everything, and was able to get that running again. We've got a couple of kits that we might be ordering to have extra parts on hand because these motors do seem to be really easy to work on and learn as you go. And have, have, I mean, if it's if it's broken, what are you gonna do? Break it? Yeah, <laughs> and as, as so tinker around, figuring it out is really important. And you know, with the generator that being down for like a week, uh, this is how we get our water into the catchment tank that feeds the house from the well pump. So it's really important that this runs when we need it. Uh, and that's why redundancy, we're talking about maybe adding the 240 inverter to supply off the battery. So we're only running it like an hour a week yeah. if we need it uh, to fill up that catchment tank uh, from the well. So, but it's nice to have backups because if this goes down, we want to make sure that the solar will work. If the solar goes down, we want to make sure this works. Um, and that's that's the long-term plan for, for that um, because this generator is really great it's done really well for us so we've got Miss Kitty making an appearance she's definitely our, our little lady in charge uh, I saw Earl Girl just a little bit ago scoping around um, their kitties are doing stuff really good um, Hey, girl, her teenager age, kind of. Yeah, she's a little stubborn. pump. <laughs> she wants attention when she wants attention, and then does it when she doesn't. And Miss Kitty is getting to be the little old lady, so mm. she'll cruise around a little bit, but for the most part, hangs around. Um, the neighbor who we did our did the water plumbing for actually gave us this cute little e-glue cat house. That she made and in the winter the cats loved that when they were outside they could just curl up in there and then we'd come home and they'd be like oh hey okay. inside now yeah thanks uh, i'm gonna look at my list here real quick make sure hey mosquito yeah it looks like uh during the winter we we didn't have a big freeze uh we had one day where it froze in the morning and then by noon it was thawed. so wasn't a huge deal this winter with our plumbing, uh, but yeah.
pretty much hit everything on the list. Um, the trench we had talked about that we had gotten done in the last video did really well so far with all the rains and stuff that we've gotten. It does really pull a lot of the water off the road. So the road is getting less washed out. And, yeah. So that's wonderful for the neighborhood in general. Um, our driveway has really done well. It's, it's really quite nice. And we've gotten a couple more flowers that Connor's gotten me to plant up there. Um, and a grapevine that we put up there. There's a couple of goji bushes that my boss had bought me and they're seeming to take a little better as well as the cactus. It's actually got a couple of blooms on it. It's about to bloom out, I would say, later this month. Um, but it's, you know, spring coming into summer, so it's been really lovely weather. A little rainy, a little dry, not too hot. Um, that's it. That's all I know. <laughs> I don't know anything. Uh, um, we're just kind of cruising along one thing at a time, and sometimes we get distracted with awesomeness, and other times we find out something else. Yeah. But, you know, uh, everything we do, you know, improves our little life quality here a little bit by little bit, day by day. And that's all our intention is, just to keep improving a little bit by little bit. I think the mosquitoes are trying to come out now. Yeah, so I'm, I'm ready to end this video so I can get away from the mosquitoes. <laughs> but, but thanks for checking in on us, and we hope you have a wonderful day.